Hey there, this is Jim Richardson of Anime Educated, and today we have a special guest, Tom Moore, all the way from Ireland, who works at a studio called Cartoon Saloon. He's done a lot of, uh, he's like been nominated twice for an Academy Award for uh, Secret of Kells and uh, Song of the Sea, and he'll be joining me very soon. Oh, I think here he comes. All the way from Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to present to you Tom Moore. Yes, here he is. All the way from Ireland. Here he is. I can hey. hear you. Can you hear me okay? I hear you fine. Great. Okay, good. How's it going? Thank you. Hi, how you doing? Uh, not too bad. It's not too bad today. Busy, but it's not too bad. Busy, but not too bad. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be busy. It's, uh, it's rainy, so you don't feel so bad to be working when it's rainy. You don't feel okay. like you're missing out or anything. Yeah, you can't go anywhere, really. You're just kind of yeah. stuck there. And yeah. Where where are you, Jim? Are you in the States? Yeah, I'm in uh, Burbank, California. Oh, yeah. I've been there many a time. I think it's hot there at the moment, is it? It is very hot, yes. Could you send some rain to us? That would be... Yeah, amazing. I know. Could you just We've opposite it? problems. We've opposite problems. <laughs> Uh -huh. Sorry, by the way, if I do lose contact, just go back to the same link and uh, we'll just kind of scramble to get connected again. <laughs> okay, well, there's Tom. He's been frozen in suspended animation. Uh, I don't know if he's going to... No, I think he's he's been... I'm, I'm sorry about that. I don't know. No, right no, it's acting really weird now. It's this virus thing. Yeah. Uh, we had to put a mask on the actual server right now, and it seems to be doing okay. So we're okay there. You bonded with some friends of yours that, that you met, I think, at the Young Irish Filmmakers. And you guys yeah. kind of went through college together, and mm -hmm. you like started working on some jobs, and then someone said, what's your company name? And you're like, company name? I don't know. Uh, you know, and had to figure that one out. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. It was funny. There was some people like Paul and Nora I met in college in Ballyfermot in Dublin. But yeah, Ross and a whole load of people were from Young Irish Filmmakers. So yeah, there was just a little, I mean, it was a long time ago now. It was like 20 yeah. years ago. So. so I wanted to ask you, now the first thing you guys worked on, I think, and you tell me the timeline here, but I know you were working on Secret of Kells, but you also were working on something totally different called Skunk Fu. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny one because originally I was co-directing Secret of Kells with a guy called Aidan Hart and he had been in Young Irish Filmmakers with me, been in school with me, went to Ballyfermot and at a certain point he got a little disillusioned with the feature, it wasn't happening, it was taking a long time to get going and he was developing plenty of things on the side and one of those things was Skunk Fu, the series mm -hmm. and uh, they pitched that, he and Paul pitched that in Cartoon Forum around the year that Secret of Cows was finally coalescing and coming together. So it was a bit like one of those situations where you're waiting for a bus and then three come at once. So we weren't expecting to be in production with a TV show and a feature film at the same time. So it was a little bit scary. But Kells had been there on the back burner, very much a pet project of mine. When Aidan had kind of moved on from it, I had kind of kept the flame alive as much as possible. And roping in Nora and Ross Stewart and everyone to help me keep it going and so when it kind of took off we had to gear up for skunk fu it was fun but it was crazy because we were still in our 20s right. mid 20s and and we'd been like 10 people working at young Irish filmmakers and we had to rent a much bigger studio and hire like 80 something people and work with teams all over the world so it was a real yeah it was a baptism of fire but yeah we ended up doing both projects at once which was really fun yeah and then you went on to doing uh the song of the sea mm. and uh you know uh, yeah and i suppose when you look back on it it looks very linear but there was a bumpy thing because i think there was a sense that that was it was incredibly difficult to pull off the feature film and get it finished and i had the idea for song of the sea but i wasn't entirely sure i'd be able to get it off the ground but getting the nomination for Secret of Kells was big. It kind of cemented our reputation or gave us enough, you know, confidence in ourselves to go and, and try and do it again, you know. So your films, they had, you know, they, right now, the, the older ones, they've, they've all relied on myths and folklore, you know, ty, you know, like the Selkies and the forest spirits. Uh, what kind of stories did you hear when you were growing up that influenced you as a kid? 
Oh, I mean, everything. I mean, a big part of what I was talking about with Song of the Sea was the fact that the main little character, Ben, who was based on my son, um, was really into comics and pop culture, you know, it was a li- and he also had his mum's stories. And that's what it was like for me as a kid. I was, wasn't until I joined Young Irish Filmmakers and I started learning about people like Joseph Campbell and stuff that I realized that Star Wars and Superman and all this stuff that I loved had all these elements from the mythology that we learned about in school and that there was actually parallels in Irish mythology and world mythology with these modern myths, you know, so that sort of, I was into both as a kid and I was maybe more into pop culture, you know, superheroes and things like that as a kid. And then, you know, you'd learn about the the other stories in school and, you know, they were a little, they were a little bit, a little bit more academic and dry. There was one guy called Jim Fitzpatrick who used to illustrate the Celtic myths, but really awesome. Like they kind of had Book of Kells type Celtic designs around them, but he drew the characters like superheroes and all the girls were really sexy and the guys were all like Conan the Barbarian and all. And so as a kid, I was like, oh, these are cool, you know? And there was a comic called Slanya that was about Celtic mythology and it was illustrated by Simon Bisley and it was real like heavy metal Celtic myths you know so that kind of stuff I liked as a kid <laughs> but um the other stuff you know it just sort of was in the background you know? right right it was interesting you you were very into comics but then your friend brought you a bunch of comics like Marvel oh wow you've done your research yeah it was my yeah. cousin came came back from Canada we had family in Canada yeah, yeah. and he had a big stack it was 89 88 89 so the batman movie hadn't come out yet right and so my idea of batman up until that stack of comics was the 60s tv show right and then that's he brought adam over that's adam yeah West. right and which is kind of fun really but it was corny back to me back then but he brought over the dark knight returns batman year one uh the cult like just all these cool comics that had come out in the late 80s and i wasn't aware of and they were like totally knocked my socks off you know right. and then I was totally primed and ready for the Tim Burton movie in 89 and uh yeah I think it was 11 or 12 when it came out and I was just totally loved that you know and you took all that information with all the comics you, you started getting into more into comics and less into animation. yeah well animation was animation as a child was exciting in Ireland in, in 1980s and I don't know the exact dates because mm-hmm. I was a kid really a little kid but I loved the idea that the Don, I used to love the Don Bluth movies that were made here. And uh, I remember going to see American Tale and there was like, and Land Before Time and All Dogs Go to Heaven and all those ones. And there was always um, like news reports on Irish TV with like the camera going in and then there'd be all these guys who seemed super cool, you know, with their 80s mullets. And they were like drawing at the desk and they were like, oh yeah, I anime. And I was like, that is the dream job, you know? So as a little kid, I thought that was amazing. And that would be an amazing thing to do. Uh, did you, now I heard you went there to the studio uh, on a tour <laughs> or something and then you were kind of disappointed by it, right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was weird. Cause I think, I think Ross, Ross came with me. He was the co-director on Wolf Walker's art director on Kells and everything. And we were school pals and we went to that because another friend of ours from school had an auntie who was working there. And I think the studio was in a bad place. It was like the early nineties. And I don't think it had had this like golden age where they were beating Disney and it was all awesome. I think they were going through a bad time. And so I kind of think we sucked up a little bit of that negative energy when we visited the studio. And we also were like arrogant little kids, <laughs> young, young teenagers. And we wanted Don Bluth's job, you know. So yeah. we were like, well, you just get to draw the flowers. Oh, that's boring or whatever. Yeah. And that, that, that impression kind of stuck but when I was a teenager I kind of in Young Irish Filmmakers I became aware of more independent like short animation and stuff and uh, I could see there was other ways to be creative without being like a big factory with just one king on top and then everyone else was a kind of slave you know right right not that that was how the studio was it was just an impression of a 14 year old kid like what did I know there was uh, a couple of people were grumbling like we'd meet them and they'd be like I'd be like Ah, I really want to do this. And they're like, oh, I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it was kind of that real sense. job, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like someone like Richard Williams, I remember meeting him and he'd been a hero of mine and he was still like, he was in his 80s and he was full of enthusiasm and saying, oh, I'd, if I was younger, I'd help you and all. And that, that's great. I, even if I have to like, 
kind of shake off my uh, <laughs> my grumpy old manness. I, I try to be a little bit more positive when I talk to young people, so that I don't give them this like <laughs> yeah. yeah negative I mean, opinion. Because when I met him, he was an art man. I met him twice. I met him years and years ago at a master class, mm. and that was really encouraging because we hadn't done anything yet. But I, he just was really nice, and he took time and looked at what we were at and everything. But then the second time I met him, I was quite. Uh, pleased with myself because I was chatting to him for a while and he was excitedly I won't do an impersonation it wouldn't be as good as yours but excitedly showed me what he was animating because he was like 80 something and he was animating in a little room at the back of Ardman Studios and uh, and then at one point he realized who I was and he's like oh you're Tom Moore and I was like oh my god he knows who I am I was really delighted you know um, but yeah, we had a little argument because he was telling me that the movies, the names were too long. Like he goes, The Song of the Sea, The Secret of Kelly. I'm so influenced by The Thief and the Cobbler, Richard. <laughs> he was like, That's where you went wrong. <laughs> As I was walking away, like walking back into the main building, he was yeah. like, Bambi, you know, Dumbo, <laughs> like one word. <laughs> so That's we made true. Wolf Walkers, which is like two words. <laughs> You, you mentioned Wolf Walkers, and I, I, mm -hmm. is that coming out soon, or is it out already? Or? No, it's, it, I'm working on the poster right now, actually. Um, uh, it's going to be, I, look, with COVID, it's so hard to say what kind of cinema release it will have in the States, um, and even anywhere, but there'll be some kind of cinema release in October, November, and then I guess in, sometime before Christmas, it'll be on Apple TV+. Plus. So hopefully most people will be able to get to see it on Apple TV. Is there anything you can talk about it? Like, it's a story, epic story of... <laughs> it's based on folklore from around here in Kilkenny. Okay. And it was kind of, we kind of felt, Ross and I kind of felt, I mean, it's a long time in production, about seven years. But when we were first working on, I was still working on Song of the Sea, and we sort of felt three was a nice number, and it would be nice to do one that sort of wrapped up the, the sort of, trilogy or triptych of Irish folklore stories and uh, so it's kind of continues on it, it there's a lot packed in there and we had a much bigger budget to play with and a much and a more experienced team and everything so I think it's I think it's one of the some of the best stuff we've done animation wise and all I really like the story as well it's about two little girls one little girl is a uh, the daughter of a hunter who comes to Kilkenny in 1650. That's when the English were trying to wipe out all the wolves. You know, it was a way to symbolically tame the country was to wipe out all the wolves. And so she's trying to be a hunter like her dad, but it's 1650 and they're Puritans. And he's like, no, you can't be a hunter. You're a little girl. You have to stay in the castle and be a housemaid or whatever. So she's sneaking out trying to hunt to prove to her dad that she could be a hunter. And she meets a little Irish girl. And the little Irish girl is like, not like the kids in the town. She's living in the woods. She's a bit wild and stuff. And they become friends, but they're really opposites, you know. And a bit by bit, the conflict of the story, I'm not giving too much away, is that she starts to realize that her new little friend is probably one of the wolves her dad is hunting. So then that's where the drama really comes from. Are there any wolf transformations like American Werewolf in London where she... No, it's really opposite. Yeah, it's really not like that. And also, what part of what attracted us to the wolf walker stories are the wolves of Ossery or the wolf, the wolf people of Kilkenny and all these stories was that it was really different. It wasn't like werewolves. They were like spirits that left, like the human body was there asleep and then a, a spirit would leave their body and that would be what people would encounter and then the spirit would come. So it was kind of interesting. Anything that would happen to the wolf yeah, like Avatar or something. Anything that would happen to the wolf out in the wild, that back at home, the sleep, if his cut his paw, the sleeping human would have a cut in their hand. You know, so it's a different take on the whole, you know, werewolfy thing. No, and it's not, it was funny as well. It was like the stories were kind of, they were tribes of people who wouldn't convert for St. Patrick. And so they were kind of, it was kind of like a curse or a blessing. So they were usually kindly. They were more like the Selkies, you know, they'd, They'd bring somebody who was lost in the woods home or, you know, they, they were more like kind of gentle and good, kind of good kind of wolf stories, you know. You mentioned Selkies. I remember the first time I heard that word is that I, I watched this uh, film called uh, The Secret of Ronin-ish. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever movie. seen that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. yeah, we always watch that. John <laughs> Sales, wasn't it? It was John yeah, Sales. John Sales, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's an American guy, but he yeah. made it in Ireland. He right. shot it. He shot it near my business partner Paul. He his family had a house up in Donegal, up in the north of Ireland, and they shot it up around there actually. So I yeah, it was interesting. It was in the. 
I don't know what, the family mythology that the Selkie movie had been shot around their house, you know. So you're working on Wolf Walkers. Any, any interesting stories about that? It's great. We have a great cast as well. Sean Dean is the dad. He's the hunter from England. And I don't know if you, everyone knows Sean Dean, but he was in Game of Thrones. He was in Lord of the Rings. And he's got a very distinctive English accent. Mm-hmm. And so his daughter, the girl who plays his daughter, did a great Sean Dean. It was really fun that, you know, he would say something and then she'd try and repeat it in his accent because she's from the south of England. So that was fun. We've got a little girl doing a Sean Bean impersonation. <laughs> but she's very talented on her as an actor in her own right. And that was nice. And yeah, it was just, a, to be honest with you, you know, I'm still kind of licking my wounds. It's just over. And Ross and I sort of kind of were, were on the project more or less full time for four full years. And prior to that, we were in development and all the time. So we're still still kind of what's the word making a narrative of it all <laughs> i don't really have much i'm still dealing with it and as i said i'm drawing the poster at the moment so i don't have enough hindsight to tell a good story i don't think yet is there a, a, a like a villain in this film our main villain is based on oliver cromwell wow. who was uh, in english history he's the took over from the king charles the first but uh he's a uh, he's kind of the adult hitler of ireland because <laughs> He took it upon himself to show the English that he was a better ruler than King Charles by utterly dis- decimating what. And Kilkenny, where we grew up here, was the capital at the time uh, of Ireland, of the Catholic Confederacy. So he was particularly brutal here, you know. So it's kind of fun to to be able to um, have our own, what's the word, you know, Tarantino-esque rewriting of history. <laughs> against Oliver Cromwell you know. but it's funny history is funny like I don't know how far back like if it's ancient ancient myths it seems fair game to just reinvent them mm-hmm. but if it's stuff from you know when does it start being that you know because people talked about that with the Inglorious Bastards that Tarantino did or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where it seems too recent it seems a bit too recent to play with history you know so I'm not sure so anyway we played it safe and we just put it in a kind of fantasy 1650. <laughs> okay <laughs> so you think it it's going to be coming out like october november maybe something like that Could be yeah i mean like the idea was to show it in um in the in Amer- north america in october november and we were hoping to be in festivals and stuff in north america so we'll see what way those festivals happen if they happen at all and then g kids should be distributing it so they should have it on on as wide a release as is possible, but I don't know what the situation is with cinemas in America, but um, they're open here, but I think it's, people are fairly cautious. So now that that's, you're wrapping that up, I guess, uh, <laughs> and you're going to be doing the, this new film called The Inventor, just doing the 2D parts on that. I shouldn't overstate The Inventor. It's Jim's movie, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him as much as I can, but it's probably not going to be my, my next main thing like i'm gonna try and make sure that i i uh, do a good job for him but it's his movie so i, I don't i kind of see myself as a helping hand or at best a sequence director you know right so um yeah the next project i direct i'm not i'm not sure about yeah i'm actually for the first time in 20 years gonna step back for a little while and sort of help with the creative production of some of the new projects in the studio and um i'm gonna take a bit of time off next year and just focus on life drawing and read a lot and see what the next project would be okay get yourself get new stuff into your head and yeah yeah it's been 20 years it's been 20 years running on the fumes (laughs) of irish folklore and you you know you could you could have three lifetimes making movies based on irish folklore there's no end to it and maybe i'll come back to it but for now i'm just interested to try other things or think about other things for a little while and see and there's there's other there's other angles on Irish history and folklore that I might like to explore. So just yeah. see what happens next. In the meantime, the studio is really busy. So there's plenty for me to help out on. Do, do, does your studio do anything with like commercial work or like? No, we like used that? to years ago. Years ago we did it, but we're all pretty um, idealistic. So it's kind of hard. Like, I'm doing a commercial now for Greenpeace mm. because I really believe in it. It's something I really believe in. Um, but I think the commercials kind of dried up because, you know, it's a full-time job trying to get a commercial. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get a commercial. You know, you have to pitch and really convince the client that you want to make it. And then you're not doing any work. Like 
I don't know how Dick Williams did it. You're not working on your own projects, you know? So as soon as we were able to spend all our time just focused on developing and making our own projects, that's what we did. And so the commercial work is now and then. Yeah. The big, the closest thing to commercial work, I'd say, is our new studio, Lighthouse. We've set up a second studio, Lighthouse, with Mercury in Canada. And it's not commercial work, but it's work for hire. Like we animate TV series for other studios. And we have a team that does like service, like animation on other features, other series and stuff. And that's, that's kind of like commercial work in that there's a client. Who, we're not the directors or the producers. We're kind of the, the kind of service studio, you know, mm. if that makes sense. In Lighthouse. Right, right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I've been saying this to a few people, uh, you know, that I interview. <laughs> I'm going to say to you, uh, the uh i've got an idea i want to do like a an anim anna jam kind of thing where oh uh, yeah each person does just a little bit of of oh, yeah. with a with a uh a theme and uh -huh. then we hook it to more and more and more oh yeah sounds uh, fun yeah so we're trying to think i'm trying to think of something it could be the covid thing like how do yeah you i did a thing for the european animation awards and um you know, everybody just took a few seconds and just spent a day or two on it. And, you know, we just designed it in such a way that, and it was just me talking about the European Animation Awards, but I kept on morphing into different, whatever anybody wanted to do with me, they could turn me into like, you know, blob or whatever. Oh, that's funny. And, it, and it, yeah, and it was, it gave, you know, everyone had like, whatever, 48 frames of footage of me talking and they could just mess about it. I mean my wife's not an animator but she did a few frames you know because it's just fun to have things change all the time you know so. yeah, you said you had this this new one that you're doing that's green piece are you still working on that or yeah that's literally in production now, that's a bit more that's like two and a half minutes long and it's a bit of a production but it's nice because I'm able to work with everyone not everyone but a lot of people who worked on Wolfwalker so we all know each other pretty well by now and it's 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 busy because the nature of commercials is they want it in such a short amount of time, right. but um, well, we'll we'll do it. Yeah, I think it's going to be nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here. I don't want to jinx it, and you know, <laughs> keep going. Uh, have it. No, I, this this has been good. After the third time, worked out good. So. Yeah, that's what they say. Third time, lucky. <laughs> third time, whichever. Uh, it's been a pleasure chatting to you, and I really appreciate your research. You know, it's nice oh, to thank you. get into some new territory and talk yeah, to someone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, we'll be waiting. Can't wait to see Wolf Walkers, see what that's all about. You've seen, there's a bunch of stuff out on the internet right now about it, just showing little clips and things. Yeah, yeah. Soon, I think Apple are going to drop a trailer, or G-Kids, one of them are going to drop a trailer, and then I'm looking forward to that, because then I can, because er, everything up until now has been a little bit, you know, old for me, like it's stuff from the start. Now I'm, I'm excited to show the final look of everything, so hopefully in the next few weeks that will come out. Okay, great. All right. Well, uh, again, thank you, Tom, for coming on Animated Educated. And I'll talk to you soon, Jim. Okay. Thank you again. Bye, man. Bye, bye. Bye. Well, that was Tom Moore of uh, Cartoon Saloon from Ireland. Uh, he's working on the poster, just now working on the poster of Wolf Walkers, his new film, which will be released sometime in the fall. And uh, yeah, this is exciting. So uh, if anybody's interested in doing, working on an Anna Jam project, uh, please get in contact with me uh, and we will talk about it later on a later show. Um, I just talked to Tom Moore. He hopefully can give us a few seconds of animation, which would be great. So uh, yeah, if you wanna be a part of a little film, uh, of your own and we'll just link them together and make it into a bigger film um yeah that's in the works right now just subscribe over there or you can wait until these uh <laughs> these videos will take you to something else that uh i've done so anyway hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching on here on animated educated talk to you later Bye bye